<laughs> oh, mercy. Look, I get it. It's a tool and you gotta work fast and you gotta work hard. But come on, man. <laughs> Uh, let's get in and do some maintenance on this MS-461 and uh, uh, Okay, enough about that. Let's let's fix this thing All right, let's get serious about this. This is high-tech German engineering <laughs> Uh I heard something about the chain tensioner being broke, but this is exactly how this saw showed up. And yeah, actually the chain tensioner's missing some parts. So I don't know. Oh gosh, look out. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not gonna work. All right, so let's say there's supposed to be something in here. Let me uh, grab some parts, but let's do a, a just a, a quick once over the rest of this well taken care of, babied professional chainsaw. Um, surprise! Let's see how that's doing. See how that's kind of been beat on? And I'm gonna hang it out there and say this probably doesn't seal very well. That's not good, man. You know, you're gonna have... Uh, if it's on the outside, it's on the inside. That is not good for bearings. Um, we'll probably just put a traditional pull handle on this one. Be cheaper when the next time. So if you're gonna drop start a saw, um, this is the rest of their saws they dropped off. That's missing one. That one's in good shape. Um, you know, you don't have to pull it like that. Um, once you, when you pull on the cord and it actually goes all the way out to the end, your spring is actually compressed and your paws will break off. And when the paws break, it bottoms out the spring. We'll see how bad this recoil is. It sounds like it's holding on a little bit. All right, let me take care of a few things real quick and we'll come right back to this. Okay, before we get to the chain tensioner, I want you to look at these threads. Try and get as close as I can. You see how these threads are actually lifted up? There's a chronic disease called another cord or turn -itis. you can actually see these threads are pretty well boogered up uh, it doesn't surprise me that these are loose because they've been over tightened so terribly hard um, i'm gonna try and chase these threads and see if we can clean them up a little bit and just you know warn the owner that one of his saw has that chronic quarter turn, uh, extra quarter turn itis as we just start diagnosing stuff. All right, so here's what's left of the chain tensioner on this unit. Uh, there's your gear, and that goes right here, and then there's a rod with another threaded barrel on it. And that's what actually rotates the slide. So this chain tensioner kit, it's got an 1125 prefix. That's from the old 026s. That's when they first came out with this chain tensioner. And it's throughout the pro line. So you'll see this same chain, same chain tensioner kit uh, giddy up used on all your pro saws, not your mid-range 291s or something like that. Those run something different, but your pro saws, 026, 260, you know, 44, 46, 461, um, 462s have the same tensioner kit, uh, 500s and 661s all use this same giddy up right here. Okay. 
Um, give me one sec. Let me put the in the stand and let's see if I can't walk you through how to get this set up. Reach in a little closer and see how I can do with this. All right. Um, it kind of stinks. You know, you buy this kit and it only has half the stuff. And I'll go ahead and hang it out there. In my personal experience, very rarely do I see this gear damaged. Um, it's always the threaded rod with the gear on it that gets broke. Now, these will last forever if you don't have gorilla hands or suffer from a chronic case of, you say it, not me. All right, and then here's your other part. And typically... When I see these break, there's two reasons. Uh, it's quite possible, and these are left-handed threads, so you'll see that I'm turning this counterclockwise and it's actually threading on. I only want to get it on just a little bit. See, so got some threads peeking out right there. Let's back it up a little bit. And that's how you'll be able to fit this on here. But either this nub gets broken off by a major shock uh, when the saw kicks back in the cut, or just by cranking down on this really hard and all of a sudden this will just snap off or bend the uh, threaded rod. So what we're gonna do next, so that's lightly threaded on, just barely enough to get the threads in there. Um, that goes on. Uh, here we go. Nope. Oh gosh. I've got it backwards. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so you've got your top white cover with the tin piece underneath. That will stay there. Let's take this over to, it should be an O-ring in here. That's part of your minuscule kit. Why is there not an O-ring in here? All right, we'll reuse the one that came off of here. This wasn't that old because this is a regular occurrence. So here, let's roll over here to the saw. So I can't get you flipped around here a little bit. You get a good angle on that so we can install this chain tensioner. Um, you'll want to go ahead and lay that O-ring right there. Take your new gear. Uh, you know, everything from steel is really expensive, but this Super Lube F FS, this is some killer grease. Um, and you know, for when you use it, it's just, you're using just a tiny bit of it. And I just wanna have a nice coat on the bottom where I can't get to. And then, oops. You get a dab down in that pocket. Okay, now we're gonna lay that in there. And this in here. And you've got one pan head screw that goes in. And this won't go together as easy if you thread the uh, chain tensioner screw that uh, the screw with the gear on it. Sorry guys, my hands are in the way, but we gotta get there. Oh gosh, come on. There we go. And again, this just needs to be snug so it doesn't back out. Um, there's one more piece that was missing. There's a plastic tab that goes right there that secures that and keeps it level so everything traverses like it's supposed to. Let me go grab one of those. It doesn't come in the kit either. All right, there's what we're looking for. I just grabbed a spare out of my parts bin. And you'll notice that it'll only go in one way. It has to go in like that. 
All that's nice and flush now. We'll put your garb bar guide plate on and it's got a small hole down. The newer saws have a Torx. I like how steel keeps all the fasteners pretty much, you know, one, you know, all the, everything's T27. So you're not switching back in between, you know, Allen heads, Torx screws, flat heads, Phillips heads, yada, yada, yada. Um, I am going to replace the chain tensioner. Where's the old one? i not chain tensioner. She just did that. Oh gosh. It's left the building. We'll be right back. Okay. So there's our old tensioner. Why do I want to keep calling it a tensioner? Uh, chain catch. Chain catcher. So that just rolls on there nice and easy. And we'll tighten that up. Let's see if I can. It's straddly. Um, I did notice while I was just kind of inspecting a few things. All right. That's good. If you look right here, there's a fair amount of bobble that shouldn't be there. One or two things is going to be going on here. Careful, this will fly. So nice and easy. Either our needle bearing right here is worn out, which it doesn't feel like it. I think it is just that right here, this hole has actually just worn out. You know, try and grease, even if it's not in for this type of service, I always try and grease this needle bearing because it just, it doesn't get anything. You know, it's, it picks up a little bit of random grease uh, from the chain and everything else. But I mean, nothing to really lubricate this little guy. So um, let's check the uh, drum. I got a spare and uh, see if that'll tighten things up. Okay, did a little bit of uh, measuring here. So your steel drum that or clutch drum is gonna come in a kit just like this does from Oregon. And these are decent, you know. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of original equipment, but the Oregon stuff is pretty good. Here's another thing to look at. You see those little dimples in between the splines? That's another good sign that you got a lot of wear. And then on the inside of this, you can feel that there's wear as well. So here's what we're going to do is when I measured the ID of this hole and this hole, it's almost 10 thousandths of an inch difference. So let's go ahead and while I've got them handy, let's just put everything new on here and install this kit. This is like a no brainer. The only thing you'll have to look for is when, I might need a light to do this. You'll have to find, okay, well, I don't know if we're gonna be able to catch it. That one little shiny spot right there above the light is the arm for the worm gear. It's, a, it's there as a locator to grab in this notch right here. <laughs> you know, these, these are just regular wear items. This isn't anything fancy. Let's get some of the ugly cleaned off of that. Get our handy dandy grease out. Let's put a dab there and then we'll roll a little bit around the outside. It's not going to take a whole lot, but see, we just got a nice coat on there. Not enough to slide all over the place. I'm gonna set that down and this should just slide right in. Nope, it's supposed to slide right in. Come on, let go. I'm trying to line that up. Come on. 
sometimes you'll have, and the reason why I'm, I, I think I'm having some trouble with this, and I may just go ahead and stop and pop this on, is that you end up with some burrs on the outside of this plastic edge, and it keeps it from just sliding right on like it was new. One sec. Okay, that's on there. And you see how your needle bearing is right at the exact same height as the rim sprocket. I'm gonna use, now this kit comes with a, uh, a fresh rim sprocket and it comes with a new E-clip and the washer. These washers are a little on the cheesy side. I prefer the nice ones that steel gives you. Uh, it comes on the saw. They seem to be a little bit more heavy duty. So, I mean, that's, that's better. I mean, that, this works. It's just a little bit on the cheap side. Here's how I install these. So hold these, and then I got a small pair of needle nose. And look how nasty everything is. All right, so just catch onto that and pull down. Make sure your chain brake is off when you do this. If your chain brake is engaged, you're going to have a hard time. But see, now we don't have that wobble from side to side, and that's all nice and tight. Um, the, uh, the original rim sprocket that was on here, yeah, got the good out of that one for sure. All right, let's see what's going on with this recoil. If you don't have a magnetic tray, you need to get one. That really helps. All right, whew, mercy. All right, you know what? Let's just take this over so I have some good light on it and I'll show you, damn son, hard on the equipment. All right, so it's about as tight as I can get you in. You see how the end of that's busted off and yeah, this one's not too bad, but here's the other thing. You see how that floats? in there like that. We're gonna have to put a new spool on here. Um, the clip looks good. New rope, new starter. Uh, let me take the tension off of this and I'll show you one other thing to look for when you're wondering if you're, uh, when it's time, look at that. All right. You know, dirt gets down in here and, and this is just, I hate to use the phrase wear part, wear item, but it really is. Let me back out just a touch. So if I take this off of here and once, all right, don't let this starter housing be the boogeyman to you. Um, these are not hard. Rule of thumb is make sure that, you know, so the ropes out, you know, there's no tension on the spring. Now it's okay. You want to dig in here and um, they call this a spring. This one's decent. I don't see any heavy wear, heavy wear on this. I do see some shiny, but I don't see anything horrible. But these paws is what they're called. I mean, they're just chewed. And moreover, the pockets they ride in. So even if we were to put a brand new Paul, here, let me see if I can't. So even if I put a brand new one in here, it still rocks around in that pocket something fierce. So, I mean, you see the wear difference from the old one to the new one. But here's the other issue is that this is not going to get any better. All right. So let me go grab some parts. We'll put the recoil together. Now's a good time to inspect the spring and see how much crud's in here. This doesn't look too terribly bad. Um, a lot of times you'll see this whole housing in here be filled with dirt and debris in between the layers. And the only way, if you're brave enough, is to pop out the spring, clean the spring, clean the pocket, then wind the spring back in there by hand. 
Um, if you're not comfortable with that, don't do it. All right, let's see how smooth we can get this done. Look at that. Just enough clearance. It's a nice slip fit. Make sure you get it. See, it's on that spring. The next thing you're going to do is lay that washer in there. Install your new paws. And where we at? Okay, so see how it's pointed up? We're just gonna roll that over. And then when you see, when you turn, like as the rope gets pulled out, those catch and when they release and they release. Okay. Rope's no biggie. Here, let me try the other side. This rope is just a whisper wide. And it's funny, I, I bought this exact same brand, same part number, same everything. And this rope is just a whisper thicker, even though it says it's the same size, it's the same part number. You know, you want to have the right size rope for the right size spool. Got that knot tightened down. Now you'll want to put the tag end of, zoom in for you so you can see what I'm doing here. You'll want this to go in first, and this is gonna be tough. This new rope is quite a bear. So see how I've got that knot in there? You'll see why it needs to be like this. Normally, you can just push on this a little bit. And now that it's in that pocket, oops, back out. No way you can see what I'm doing here. Now that's in the pocket, what I can do is grab a hold of the rope and pull on it nice and tight and make sure that this is flush and smooth so now that sticks up. That way you don't have any interference with this spring that actuates your starter paws. All right. Then real simple, we'll have steel cells, just plain old generic plastic handles. They're cheap. They're like five bucks a piece. There's your part number right there. You know, not all plastics created equal. So what I do is a slip knot. All right. So there's your slip knot, and then run your tag in back through. And then we're gonna pull all this tight. And that makes a nice big fat knot that's not gonna come undone. Sensors down. And then get rid of your other tag in right there, just bury it. So then you've got this nice big knot that's never gonna pull through. All right. And then back out a little bit. And so I didn't measure how much rope this is, but I've got a spot on the wall when I pull it off my spool. Anyway, this should take about four to five rounds. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Now, I've got all this twisted nonsense. Here. You want to untwist all that. Make sure there's no twist in your rope. Holding pressure on this. This is sprung. And then you want to make sure that that snaps back in there. And then lastly, when you pull this all the way out and it stops, that the rope is at the end. You don't want to see this bottom out and stop right here. That means the spring on the inside is compressed all the way in. Okay. But five turns, 
You don't want to see any excess rope on the outside. Just enough, not too much. Okay. All right. We're all back together again. Recoils rebuilt. Fresh side cover. I did have to switch out um, one of the bar studs. These threads were just, once I chased them, they were just too skinny. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed anything today, if you found this marginally entertaining, informative, or adequate to push the like button, I appreciate that. Um, we'll get to talking about some oil threads. I know that's a whole lot more juicier than uh, talking about chainsaw repairs, but I mean, you know, this is day in and day out stuff. I was going to incorporate a board dressing, but this bar, and I'm glad before I put the effort into truing up the rails and everything else, given the wear, given the operator, um, this bar is crooked as a dog's hind leg. So with that being said, we're not going to waste the time dressing the rails. Um, one of the rails, and this is a perfect example of, let me move that light. The perfect example, when you look down the bar, aside from noticing that it looks like that, it's been pinched and pulled on a couple of times. Um, one rail's higher than the other. So that means the chain's not riding straight up. It's cocked off to one side. So by getting a, a good bar dressing tool, and I'll show you what that looks like here. Let me pause you. This right here is made by Preferred, Preferred, whatever you'd like to call it. They make really nice stuff. Anyway, the idea is the of this is you've got a 90 degree angle. So this way, when you lay it on here, press against it and put some force down, you'll actually start to grind or shave, file, whatever you want to call it, uh, the bar back to square. Right, some guys will use a flat file. This just does a little bit better at keeping that, those rails just dead nuts, 90 degrees to the side of the bar. So the chain rides true as possible. So next time I got a decent bar that's worth putting the effort into, we'll uh, touch that up. Anyway, thanks for coming along with me today. Hope you enjoyed this. And these are everyday things that you can do. You don't have to be Mr. Small Engine Guy. You know, parts are expensive, but you know, it's a pro saw, it gets used. This thing makes money every day. Just gotta keep up with it and uh, it'll take care of you. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for stopping in.